evening and welcome to Information Please, your Peoria Public Library on the air, bringing you information about your library and your community. And this evening my guest is Carla Wilkinson, who has become our resident expert on all things electronic devices that you can read books on. Hi Carla. Hello. <laughs> I'm glad you could come. You have been so busy having classes and the demand doesn't stop since I, we offered our first yes. one. And the friends of the library have purchased all of this paraphernalia. They like have. Like every e-reader there is just about. Uh -huh. I don't, do you have an iPad there? I don't have an right, iPad. Those else, are so. a little more pricey than the rest of these. Yeah, and I, I got my iPhone out mm -hmm. because I, I do okay. this on my iPhone. I do have an iPod Touch, and then I have an Android phone which and I can use for that as well. Yeah, never be without a book because it's in my phone and I yes. can get trapped somewhere you can uh -huh. read, read Absolutely. on it. But um, we should talk about the whole reason that the library is involved in e-readers mm -hmm. is because we have Overdrive Media. Mm -hmm. And that is, a, we pay for that. Mm -hmm. And that delivers both e-books and audio books to our patrons who have a library card and mm -hmm. can download them. They can't do it in the library. They have to do it from somewhere else. Correct. Yeah, we don't have like yes. a download station or anything. We don't, um, just because there are a lot of logistics involved in yeah. that. Um, but you can do it from home. It's very easy. You can come into the library and we will, we will teach you how to do it. Or I've been helping a lot of people over the phone. And I've, I've become kind of good at it because I can pull out whatever device they're trying to use and I can walk through it with them and, over the phone. And figure it all out, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And for people who are still, you know, the, the uproar about, I'll never read an e-book e is mm -hmm. dying down. I heard the best line the other day that said, I, I think it was one of those Facebook memes that said that um, the e-book to a regular book is like an elevator to stairs, which I think uh -huh. pretty well sums uh -huh. it up. It's just like the computer to pen and ink. It's just another tool, uh -huh. another way to do it. Uh -huh. And I know one of the big things people have also said to me over and over is, well, I can't read on that because I need the feel of a book in my hand. Well, I personally don't. I'll read anything anywhere. But I do know that other people have found once they get a cover and they have their two halves, oh boy, uh -huh. it's just like a book. I saw something, a joke on Facebook maybe yeah. the other day that um, was a fake ad for an e-reader and it had minimal options and characteristics and features but it smelled like paper so it cost a thousand dollars so so you know people know and and I was skeptical I I do have a Kindle of my own but I was skeptical because I'm one of those people that thought well, I need a book but they are very handy very easy mm -hmm. to take with you especially if you're reading a large book one of those really thick ones um, you can just mm -hmm. put it on one of these and it's easier to handle. You can hang on to it with one hand. It's a lot nicer. Yeah, and I do have to confess that I have been reading ebooks, I think, since they came into existence. And I started reading them on my Palm Pilot, of all things. <laughs> and libraries didn't have them, but you only mm -hmm. paid, you know, like not too much money to download them, and it was kind mm -hmm. of an ordeal. But I did it, and the reason I did it is because I'm just one of those people that can't be without a book. And at mm -hmm. that time, the way my life was running, it was very difficult to get anywhere, to get a book, or to even buy a book, or get to the library, or anything else. And people would say to me, doesn't that bother you having to, you know, flick the thing or click on it? And I'm like, you know, it's just like when you're reading a paper book. I don't even realize I'm turning the pages. I'm uh -huh. just sitting there going like this. Uh -huh. Plus, I like the fact that they lit up and that I could read it in bed and not bother anybody. Uh -huh. Didn't have to have a book light. So I'm a long time user. Mm -hmm. of ebooks and, mm -hmm. and love them way mm -hmm. back to the first technology mm -hmm. anyway so overdrive how do we get there you can get there from our homepage, peoriapubliclibrary.org and there is a link right on our homepage. and they should look for this logo um, yes or look for the alliance digital media library that's what we call it because mm -hmm. that's our our library system and you get there very easily and you can browse through like you said ebooks and audiobooks right right and mm -hmm. it's it's for a while they're audiobooks for the huge demand and it's yes kind of slacked mm -hmm. off again mm -hmm. so. yes um, so there are, there are people who still enjoy them and 
I like the occasional audiobook. You know, you're in the car. See, I have an audiobook going all the time <laughs> uh -huh, as well as uh -huh. an e-book and a paper book. Uh -huh. Not terrible. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good thing I work at the library, uh -huh. right? Yes, yes. <laughs> well, here is one of the many devices, and uh -huh. it's a Kindle. And everybody hears about Kindle because uh -huh. there's so much marketing behind them. Yes, Kindle. This is the Kindle Touch. So if you look at it, you'll notice there's only one button that you can see in this picture. There's mm -hmm. also a button on the bottom that's the power button but it is a touch screen so basically everything is controlled so it, by a touch of the screen it would work like your iphone mm -hmm. or, or any of your android whatever where yes. you're touching the screen to mm -hmm. change things mm -hmm. so when you want to turn a page if you want to go forward you touch the right side of the screen if you need to go back you touch the left side of the screen and it's very sensitive you know you don't have to hit it bang on it you just touch it very lightly um, it's a very lightweight device and this one also has a web browser so if you are in a Wi-Fi zone you can check your email Google something go on Facebook it is black and white so if you're trying to look at pictures on Facebook it's it's not quite as as That's good fun. as if you yeah. have a color device but um, this is actually the one I have and, and it I love how it works it's not not the prettiest interface it's pretty simple mm -hmm. but if you just want a nice e-reader this is a, a good way to go um, and again this one is made by Amazon you can buy them on Amazon or in some stores uh, yeah Lots Walmart of places has sell them, them. Mm -hmm. and I think Best Buy mm -hmm. has them and this particular device was $99 you can get one with 3G which allows you to shop from the the Kindle store wherever you are it doesn't give you internet access wherever you are but you can get that for a, a little larger fee a little more mm -hmm. yeah. so if you're traveling mm -hmm. and you're in the middle of Montana and you yes. finish your book you can still uh -huh. go if, get one. if you're a big traveler this is a, a great one to have okay good good mm -hmm. well and we've got so many devices here but yes there's beautiful color. Yes, this is the Kindle Fire. It's again an Amazon device. It's a little larger. It's a little heavier. This one for me is a little almost too big for my hand um, sometimes, but it, it does a lot more than just reading. You can still read books on it, but it, it has apps. You can put Angry mm -hmm. Birds on here or you know whatever kind of games or apps you want to have. Mm -hmm. um, and then also the books. And it has a, a nicer web browser and it's beautiful color display as you can so see. So you can read magazines mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. or if you're wanting to look at art books or uh -huh. what about books for kids? Yes, absolutely. You can put picture books on here. Some um, ebook makers make interactive picture books for kids. Some of them read the book to the child. You can put flashcards on here if your child is learning their words or their alphabet. Um, you can do all sorts of fun things with the color devices. Great, great. And mm -hmm. people's cats probably like them too. Probably, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get my cats to play with an app on my iPhone and they uh -huh. were not interested. Oh, well. It was bugs, they didn't uh -huh. care. <laughs> Live bugs, yeah, but they uh -huh. seem to know the difference. Uh -huh. Okay, and what's here's another Kindle. This is the simplest Kindle. This is the Kindle 4. It is $79, so it's the cheapest. It is not a touch screen. You'll, you can see it has more buttons on it. There are buttons along the sides to turn the pages with. Um, but again, it, it has a web browser, so you can still go and check your email, whatever you want to do. Um, and this is really, if all you want is just a simple, affordable e-reader, this would be the way to go. Because it's, is it's, that the one with ads? This does have ads. You'll see it says with special offers and you think, oh, special offers, that sounds fun. But special offers means that when your screen is um, hibernating, you have an ad for an Amazon product. You can pay about 30 to $40 more to get it without special offers, which means it doesn't have ads. But if you don't care, Go yeah. ahead and get the and special it's not, offers. And it, they're not popping up while you're reading a book. No, no. They're only on there when it's in... When, when it's when in it's hibernation in yeah. or um, 
on your home page there will be a little banner across the bottom but when you're reading a book you're not going to get pop-ups or anything like that yeah, interfering you with your that. reading okay mm -hmm. and all these work pretty much the same to download books onto the kindles work the same when you get to um, a nook by barnes and noble it's a little different with the kindle you go on the website the alliance digital media library you find a book that you want you check it out and then where normally it would say download, it says get for Kindle. When you click on that link, it takes you to the Amazon website. And then it, it kind of looks like you're buying the book, but where it would normally say buy this book, it says get library book. So oh. you have to go through Amazon to get Still the to ebook, get but then it sends it through um, an internet, a Wi-Fi connection to your device so you don't actually have to connect your device to a computer with a cord and transfer it. It's, Kindle calls it WhisperNet technology. It's just sending titles to your device through the internet, through a Wi-Fi connection. Yeah, which is fairly painless and easy. It's just it's, that extra step. It's really Amazon. easy. Mm -hmm. But if we'll recall, and people who haven't been up on this may not realize that for a long time, Kindle was the holdout that wouldn't yes. let you do library books. So yes. I imagine the payoff there might be that they might be wanted to keep track of what you're checking out from the library <laughs> so well, that uh -huh. for, for marketing mm -hmm. reasons but yes and when your when your library loan expires mm -hmm. they will ask you if you want to buy the book and you can you can tell them no <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you might want to buy it you every might once want to while, if it's a good one mm -hmm. yeah every once in a while mm -hmm. I want to buy a book yes so okay and we've probably got another one here we can look at. I think we at. do. Okay, now we've traveled over to Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble only really has two devices, three technically. This is the Nook Color. They also have a Nook Tablet, which is basically the same thing. It's just, uh, it has a faster processor and a little more storage space. And this is a, a color device. It does basically the same things that the Kindle Fire does but it just looks a little bit different. So again, games, Is it bigger? Magazines. Is the screen bigger? I think the screen is about the same size. The device itself is a little bit bigger because the border is a little bit bigger. Okay. But I believe the screen is about the same size. Um, and there are a few external buttons on this one, but again, it, it's mostly a, a touch screen interface. So again, magazines, games, picture books for your children, mm -hmm. um, the colors in picture books really look vibrant and just pop out at you on just these screens. They're great, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, and I think we have the other the other Nook. Um, this is a Nook Simple Touch, and it is like the Kindle Touch. This is mm -hmm. a touch screen. It also has buttons along the sides if you would rather press a button to turn the page. So then touch the screen. Mm -hmm. You can touch the screen or you can press the button. So there are a couple more options. Um, it's a little prettier. The home page gives you the cover of a book as opposed to the Kindle just lists the titles. But there's not much of a difference between the two. They, they um, perform the same functions. Mm -hmm. um, the Nook doesn't have a web browser. Okay. So there are a couple of differences. So if you just, all you want to do is read, you don't even care about web browser, the Nook might be better for you. Also, with the Nook, you can go into Barnes & Noble if you need technical support. With the Kindle, you have to communicate over the internet or over with the someone. phone with Amazon. Mm -hmm. Or with you. <laughs> yes, or with me, you can call me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great, okay, and is that one price-wise? I believe this one is about $99, so okay. a little more expensive than the $79 Kindle. But there's no ads. No ads. Um, the bottom of the screen is books that you can buy from the store, so it's not technically an ad, but it, it does take up mm -hmm. space on your homepage. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, have we got any more here, do you think? I think we have one more. This is the iPad. We don't have an iPad, like I said, because they run about about four hundred dollars for a base model. You can spend mm -hmm. up to a probably a thousand dollars on an mm -hmm. iPad. What I have is the iPod Touch, which functions in the same way as an iPad. It's just a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. 
and what you do on your iPod Touch, your iPhone, your iPad, or your Android device is you get the OverDrive app. And that allows you to check out books without using a computer. Mm -hmm. With all these other devices, you have to go on a computer and check out the book and then transfer it to your device. With the Apple products or an Android phone, you do everything through the app and it downloads directly to your device. Yeah, that's, that's what I do with my, with my iPhone is mm -hmm. I just have the app and mm -hmm. find a book and there it is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's really handy. And there are lots of other things you can do with the iPad, of course, yeah. uh, that make it a really fun device. And so we have lots of people who have been bringing in their brand new iPads and they're really excited about them, but they're not quite sure what to do with them. Yeah, yeah, there's so many things you can mm -hmm. do with it. Mm -hmm. And let's see, I think you've got, before we talk about this, you have one more device I have, I have over one there. more we don't have a picture of. This is the Sony Reader. Not a lot of people have this one, but this is a very good device. It, it comes with a stylus, but it's also a touch screen. So it's really, if, if you are more comfortable you, using the stylus, you can. you can, or you can just use your finger. Um, this one has a web browser. It also has something that none of these other devices have, and that's a library button. So oh. if I was to turn this on, there's a button that says library, and that's very similar to having the OverDrive app. And that means that you don't have to connect this one to your computer either. You can check out books directly on this device. And they come in cool colors. <laughs> which <laughs> An is, important is, selling point. Yes, absolutely. So not a lot of people have this one, but it's, it's a very good device, uh, very compatible with OverDrive. With OverDrive. If you want to check And can you buy out. books somewhere also? You can. Um, Sony Reader has their own store. You could also buy books through Google Books to put on this. Um, okay. And I, I think you should probably be able to put books from the Nook store on the Sony Reader as well. Kindle has their own format, so you can only put Kindle books on a Kindle, but the Nooks and the Sony Reader are a more universal EPUB format, so you could put those books on any of these devices. To tell us about the different formats because there are different ones and there people are. need to be aware of that mm -hmm. when they go in to look for something to read. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the Kindles have their own format and it's it's a competition thing. I mean, they want to sell their books. Yeah. Um, they kind of have a monopoly on it. If you own a Kindle device, mm -hmm. then you have to get the Kindle format of books so you can't go to any ebook store and buy a book for your Kindle. It has to be the Kindle format. Barnes and Noble, the Nook, the Sony Reader, um, and the the iPad or the iPod take an EPUB or a PDF. EPUB is just a, a universal ebook format um, that is compatible with many devices. PDF is like the PDF that you would read on your computer. Right. And then, Somebody sends you a document mm -hmm. that's a PDF. It's like a document. So mm -hmm. sometimes with the PDF, you might not be able to change your text size or your font. It's, it's a, They're locked mm -hmm. in. With the EPUB or the Kindle, you have the option of changing your font size, changing your um, font style. You can go from Times New Roman to you know, whatever. They, yeah, whatever have, you find mm -hmm, easier to read. They have lots of different options and you can change margin sizes and, and line spacing. There are lots of different things that you can change with those different formats. Yeah, we should, we should talk about that. That's one of the great advantages. If people have not had the opportunity to see mm -hmm. an e-reader and how it works. You can set that font size so that it's comfortable for you to read. Mm -hmm. I know I can set it so that I don't even need glasses to mm -hmm. read it. Mm -hmm. And that's what people who wear reading glasses may really like that uh -huh. feature of it. I've heard from people that, oh, I don't think I can use an e-reader. I read large print. Well, you can make words that are almost an inch tall on some of these devices. Yeah. Or I like to make my font a little smaller because the larger your font, the more times you have to turn yeah, the page. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You turn the page a lot when you, you have, do. A, have a you big do. font. Yeah. But with my smaller font, I can turn the page less often. And, yeah. and I, I like that better than having to turn the page yeah. every five words or whatever. A lot of, lot of advantages. A lot of advantages mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. people who've been reluctant. And mm -hmm. one of the reasons the Friends of the Library 
bought us all these toys was so that we could show people. Yes. You don't have to go to a store and be in a high pressure environment. When you have one of your programs, you can just mm -hmm. come and mm -hmm. look and try them out and see which thing you like the best. Yes. Yeah. We found that the need was great for mm -hmm. e-reader classes. Um, there were lots of people who, especially right after the holidays, people Got them get as them gifts. as gifts and they don't know what to do with them. Um, I think a lot of my generation are buying them for our parents or our grandparents because we think, oh, mom likes to read. She would like one of these. But then mom doesn't know what, know to, what do to do with, with it. it. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've had a lot of people who have come in that, that don't quite know what to do, but mm -hmm. once they learn how to, how to use them and how to check out books, they're really enjoying them. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little more about the process of checking mm -hmm. out books. And here we have what, when you actually go mm -hmm. to the library website to look for a book, this is the Alliance Digital Media Library homepage. Mm -hmm. This is the homepage, and um, they list, they give you several different quick categories here, mm -hmm. like new releases is always at the top. Those are books that have just been added mm -hmm. to the digital catalog. Below that is most popular, the things that are checked out all the time. And then the third one down is recently returned, and that's a good place to go if you don't really have anything specific you're looking for, but you just mm -hmm. want something good to read. Those are things that have just come back. And I, I should also explain that because it's an ebook, that doesn't mean that there are infinite numbers of copies available. Right. We pay for each mm -hmm. copy that we have. And mm -hmm. Peoria Public Library, while we share Alliance Digital Media Library with a great number of libraries across Illinois, which means if there's only one copy, we only check out one at a time. Peoria actually has extra copies that are only available to Peoria mm -hmm. Public Library card holders. You do yes. need your library card and you need your PIN number. Yes, absolutely. If you don't know your PIN number, call the library and ask. Yes. Because we uh -huh. will tell you. Or there is a way through the RSA CAT, the regular mm -hmm. catalog for regular paper books. There is a link on there that you can mm -hmm. have that PIN number emailed if you don't know it. And if you already use the online catalog for holds, mm -hmm. it's the same PIN number. Some people think that they have to have a new PIN yeah, number, no. but it's, it's the same. One PIN number for everything uh -huh. at, the, uh -huh. at the library, mm -hmm. and you can change that yourself mm -hmm. or whatever you want yes. to do. And one of the things um, that people have said, well, you can't get anything on there. They're, they're, they're so popular, but you have to develop a system, put mm -hmm. some things on hold, the things you want to read on hold, and Maybe you're not going to get the exact book you want at that moment, at that second, mm -hmm. but you can read the book you want just like in any library. Maybe you put it on hold and then you'll get an email. Is that what you get an email? You to, do get yeah, an email. an email to tell you mm -hmm. that your book is available and you check it out. And then when your checkout time's gone, it disappears, right? Yes. There are no late fees. No. We're they not just gonna take it away. We're not going to lock your card. <laughs> it just stops working. You may forget that the the due date was coming up and you, you pick up your device and you try to open the book and it, it will say your your loan has expired. Would you like to buy it to finish it? <laughs> so And you can't renew them. Hmm. It, it works a little differently than a, a physical book. You can't renew them, but you can go back in and check them out. Yeah, you can go back in and check them out again if it's available. Mm -hmm. And we should point out that there's also a link on here, always available. And there, yes. there are numerous books, and they may be the classics, but mm -hmm. classics are good for you. Yes. Read a classic. These are, um, these are public domain titles. The, yeah. the copyright has expired, so the classics, most of them. And, yes. and you can just load your, I have, I don't know how many classics on my e-reader mm -hmm. that I've just put on there to always have. Yeah, I was surprised when, um, when the, the movie Prince, John Carter and the Princess of Mars, or John Carter Mars, whatever, mm -hmm. came out. And I was like, oh, I read all those books when I was a kid. I want to read those again. Turned out they're in public domain, and I was uh -huh. able to get them from Google Books. And right here in this iPhone, I uh -huh. have John Carter. <laughs> uh -huh. So I'm able to read that, you know, whenever I want. Uh -huh. And uh, it's, it's a good system. It's um, got a wide variety of titles. And uh -huh. we always take suggestions from people if there's more things they would like to see, uh -huh. just like we do for our paper books. If there's something you want, you don't have it. And they also keep an eye on how many of something's being checked out. Mm -hmm. Because if there's a huge demand, then they will order more copies. Mm -hmm. But Peoria's lucky because we have that Peoria Advantage program mm -hmm. that 
Peoria Public Library card holders do have more titles to choose yes. from. There's actually a place on the website, if you log in and then go under my account, there is a, a place, an option there to request a title. Oh, so very you can good. you can suggest a title for yeah. us for us to purchase. Yeah. Okay, so you've given a lot of classes over and over and over. Do you have any coming up? I do. I'm I'm going to try to start doing what I'm calling e reader parties. And my goal is to do these once a month at the North Branch and we're we're aiming for Monday nights at six o'clock because that seems to be the best time for people. So um, we have some coming up in August that I just scheduled the dates for yesterday. I believe it's the last two weeks in August. Okay. And we will have a different group for iPads, Nooks, and Kindles because those are the most popular devices. And then I'm, I've tried to schedule them through October so far and we'll see what how happens. many people come and, and maybe mm -hmm. the need will be greater and I, I'll schedule more. We'll mm -hmm. see what happens. But you can check our website, our web calendar, our newsletter for those dates and times. Right. But you can also, if you're really desperate and it's too long till the class, there, there are librarians who are always willing to yes. help you. Yes, yes. Any, anywhere you are. And if and they don't know the answer, they'll call me. Yeah. <laughs> well, we also have our computer lab and over mm -hmm. the, and this may be changing, but through August we still will have open computer lab hours both mm -hmm. at um, Main Library and at Lincoln Branch yes. that you can pop in the computer lab and there's someone there with you know with the computers that will help you not only with these either e-readers but any of the computer programs that are on those mm -hmm. which is all the popular ones Word and all that you can use you know fill out a resume and use job now all, the, all those things that we have at the library mm -hmm. and somebody will show you how to do that so yes yeah, yeah. So, do you have books you're reading on all these? I don't. I, don't. I, I have my own that I'm, I'm reading, Northanger Abbey, which I got for free through mm -hmm. Project Gutenberg, which is a great website of public domain titles. Mm -hmm. And you can get Kindle formatted books or great. Nook formatted. Um, they well, have thousands. I know. You get back to the library and get back to downloading <laughs> things for people. Yes. Thank you for joining us, Carla, and I know you need to get back to the library and get busy with all these things. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week on Information, Please.